The following is an Infinity One Productions presentation. Keeping it honest, insightful, interactive. Covering weekly fallout from TNA Impact Wrestling Live as seen on Spike TV. You're listening to Impact Showdown Radio with your host, Lee Sanders. Welcome to Impact Showdown Radio, coming at you live right now on May 16th, 2013. Eight minutes into the 10 o'clock hour over here on the East Coast. We've got a chat room open for you guys right now at blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show. Feel free to jump on in there when you get a free moment. You can also interact with us during the course of this episode by hitting us up on Twitter at infinity one Prod or over at our show handle, the RCWR Show. Two options for you there. we got a great jam-packed episode for you tonight. We're going to talk about the fallout later on in the show from tonight's Impact Wrestling. Though it was pre-taped, damn strong episode and was exactly what we needed as TNA is making their way to the Slammiversary pay-per-view. I don't know about those of you that like to check out wrestling from all the promotions, but, you know, I just have to say when I look at WWE's Road to the Extreme Rules pay-per-view this Sunday and I compare it to TNA's Road to Boston June 2nd for Slammiversary, just the way that they had handled this episode tonight from just that production value standpoint, they really, really reeled me in. I am just eagerly anticipating the Slammiversary pay-per-view. Of course, we'll talk more about the fallout and a look into the Slammiversary card later part of the show. We got a cool guest. I always love it when this guy comes by. Of course, he was one of our first guests that we had on the show, as pointed out by one of our Twitter buddies, uh, Daniel. And uh, he said, yeah, he's like, my memory serves me right. Justin was the very first guest you had on your show. Shows how long I've been listening to you, man. Nice to see that you're still going strong over there. And we appreciate that. It was Daniel that uh, had said that. Appreciate that, Daniel. And, uh, yeah, man, it's always fun when Justin comes by the show. We always kick back. We have a blast. This time around, though, some really cool stuff had went down for Justin. Of course, you know, it's been Justin's dream to one day get a hold of a TNA wrestling contract as he feels he'd be a really good fit, great addition to their roster. And he had participated recently in the TNA Gut Check Online Challenge. And you could vote for him during this past weekend. Well, turns out he won, and he's moved on, from what I'm able to understand, to the advanced tournament. So it looks like all the winners are just in this one big tournament pool right now. And uh, I told Justin, I said, hey, buddy, I said, you know, glad you won. You got to come on the show. You got to tell the good folks about it, you know, what's going to happen next, and just some cool wrestling stories and talk about any upcoming events he's got uh, coming down and everything. So without any further ado, let's go on ahead and let's run right through it. You know, we've had a long delay long enough. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only the famous Justin Reno. Justin, buddy, how you been? What? Who is this? How'd you get this number? Uh, well, it sounds like we might have a, a bad connection. Uh, uh, Justin? Who is this? Uh, well, this is Lee Sanders of the RCWR show over here on blogtalkradio.com. Who's this? There's no Justin Reno here. My name is Judas. Judas York. Judas Yorick? Oh, Judas York. Yeah, Judas. I- I've heard a lot about you, sir. How you doing tonight? Oh, I, I hope good things. I hope they're all good things. On the contrary, I've I've heard bad things uh, uh, about you, but you know, um, I'm a little nervous right now. I, I you know I, I thought I was calling Justin, um, but um, I, I I guess you're the next best thing. I guess we can we can take you on. Yeah. Um, wow. So, uh, Judas, tell the good folks about yourself. Well. <laughs> Let me tell you something first. If we lose connection, it's because I don't have good reception in the castle of horrors. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. I totally understand that. All right. I live in the castle of horrors in Chicago. Do you know where that is? I I, I was actually born in Chicago, but I've never quite heard of that area. Have you heard of H.H. Holmes? No, I haven't. 
You need to do your research on serial killers, sir. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, I, I will, sir. I, I will. Don't I, 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 I think here, you want me to you say like? Say what? Justin's not here. Do you want me to take a message? Um... Well, I, I guess whenever Justin is able to, uh, you know, come on by the show, I, I thought we were going to have Justin tonight. Um, boys and girls, if you don't know who uh, Judas Dork is, uh, he, he's one that's been uh, making some waves uh, down in the uh, indie promotion. I know, Judas, you've been doing a little bit of work down in uh, Blitz Pro Wrestling, correct? I have, I have. Thank you for noticing that. Yeah, I noticed a little thing or two, yeah. I, I must tell you, sir, I'm very intimidated by you right now. This this is a uh, all the interviews I've done. This is one that I am a uh, uh, quite quite. Um, uh, I'm sweating over here. I've already said tonight. You don't have to worry. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's good. Um, you know, I I couldn't help but um, take a look at the uh, the TNA website. And, uh, you know, I think I might just owe you a huge apology, sir, as it wasn't Justin Marino that won the uh, gut check challenge. It was actually you. That's right. That's right. It was me. I won the challenge. But you know what? It doesn't feel that great because I didn't hurt anybody to win it. So let me see if I understand this correctly. You would have preferred it if you would have physically hurting somebody to be able to win as opposed to just twiddle your thumbs and win. There's something you have to understand about Judas York. The only reason that I'm in pro wrestling is because I like hurting people. I was in the asylum for years, and one day me and my therapist came to the conclusion that pro wrestling would be a good way for me to get my aggression out. Hmm. And and who I like hurting doctor? people. Who who's this doctor? I'm curious. Is it Stevie Richards by chance? Uh I call him Mr. Scully. Mr. Scully, okay. Okay, that's, that's a very interesting name there, yeah. Well, well, it's nice that your psychiatrist uh, tried to uh, help you direct this anger and, and frustration in, in other ways. Uh, yes. But, uh, uh, and don't it comes you, to the rings, me too. Don't you think it's a little bit too much, though? I, I mean, don't you don't you fear you you might uh, hurt somebody very badly by accident? By accident. <laughs> you are funny, Mister Sanders. Uh, I, I hear, yeah. Uh, I, I, I take it you like breaking people. What did I just say? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to focus. Yeah, I'm, I'm just intimidated by your presence, sir. I, I apologize. Oh, yeah. um, so, 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 how long have you? Uh, uh, I, does it get? I, I mean, let's be for real here. Does it make you happy when you hear people scream as you're literally breaking their bones? It really is the only thing that lets me sleep well at night. Wow. Wow. That's 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 very eerie. It's very eerie to hear that, sir. <laughs> so tell me tell tell the listeners tell us a little bit of, about your, your childhood. What 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 made you become this this thing that you are today. I don't know how much I should talk about that without Mr. Scully here, but to give you the short story, I didn't know my parents very long. I bounced around from foster home to foster home until, unfortunately, something happened to my foster parents. They both died. After that, I started to hear the voices in my head, and not after not long after that, I found myself in the asylum where I was for seven years. 
until I found wrestling. Wow. Wow. That's uh, that's some heavy stuff right there. Wow. I'm curious, have you ever talked to a uh, Mick Foley? Because, you know, over the years, uh, Mick Foley, he's had a few, uh, I guess you could call it identity crisis problems there. Uh, he could probably tell you the best way you can kind of cope with some of those traumatic events from your past. Excuse me? Excuse me? Uh, I'm sorry? I don't like who I am. Oh, you like who you are? You don't think there's anything that needs to be fixed? Do you? Uh, Is there something with me? I, I don't know. I mean, you got some cool makeup and... And, I mean, personally, I think there might be a little something wrong with you. You you, you like to hurt people. You like to hear them scream. You like breaking their bones. I, I think that, you know, there is something wrong with you. I think I think maybe you need to be in MMA, not wrestling. MMA is, is the sport you want to be because it's okay to break people's bones. You have no problem for that, Mr. Miller? I don't have an opinion. But okay. So tell tell the good folks. Uh, 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 uh Judas, you okay? Sounds like you're kind of spitting up over there. <laughs> I'm okay. Oh, you you okay, man? It sounds like you're kind of having an episode there. You you, you need me to call a paramedic or something? <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, Mr. York, you okay, sir? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm here. Are you okay? You need me to call you a paramedic or something? Uh, maybe you could tell us where you live. Maybe, maybe somebody that's listening can maybe call a paramedic for you. See, see if you might need a little help. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, this is, this is very awkward, sir. Um, if you like, we can, uh, you know, uh, just let you go and do your screaming thing and, and you can, you know. Okay. Well, it looks like that call was dropped. That was a, uh, a very weird conversation right there. Um, if you're joining us in progress, you're probably saying to yourself, what in the blue hell? was that and i have the slightest clue i thought we were going to be talking to the famous justin reno and talk about him winning the tna gut check but uh it actually turns out uh, and it was a huge error on my part uh it was actually uh, a man by the name of judas yorick that uh had won the tna gut check online challenge and that's exactly who you had heard uh, on the phone just now, uh, he has done some work down in Pro Wrestling Blitz, and, uh, you know, he, surprisingly, he has a website. I, I, The way he sounded, I doubt he was the one that made the website. I don't know. Maybe it was his doctor that probably had put the website together so that he can deal with whatever trauma it is that he's having. Uh, but uh, he has a website over at judasyorick.com. And the way you spell that out is J-U-D-A-S-Y-O-R-I-C-K, Judas Yorick. And you can see some videos of him, and I must say they're very graphic and, and very disturbing, and hopefully that young creature thing can get the necessary help that it needs. We're going to try to move along from that very awkward segment. I do apologize to those of you that had experienced that, and let's try to see if we can move along on a lighter note as we get the show off and running. So for those of you that might have missed it, we had put out a YouTube video on our channel over at the RCWR show. I believe it was on Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning. 
that we had put the video out. In case you missed it, Diamond K, he is no longer going to be part of the shows. I repeat, Diamond K, he is no longer going to be part of the shows. He's decided that he wants to move on to other endeavors. And, of course, we do wish him the very best in that and whatever it is that he is setting his mind out to do. Definitely no hard uh, feelings over here, no bitter feelings, no malice towards him. And uh, for those of you that want a little bit of insight as to what had possibly went down, as I didn't really go into too much graphic details, you're more than welcome to check out the video that we've uploaded on YouTube talking about it. And we're also asking for you, the Blog Talk Radio listeners, as well as our YouTube subscribers, we're getting you all's input on what you all would like in the next co-host. We know that there are some of you that felt a little bit divided when it came to Diamond K coming on board earlier in January. Some of you have felt that the show was better as I was flying solo. Others kind of felt it was kind of nice to have a second head to go back and forth with. Could have been a little better, but hey, we're at the point where we are right now, which is the present, so we're talking about what's going to happen in the future. And with you all's input, we can definitely make the best effort to make sure that the third time is the charm and that we get the right person uh, on here. One thing I can tell you, boys and girls, though, and I say this with great passion, if you've been listening to the shows for a long time, if you even had the fortunate pleasure to interact with me on Twitter, Facebook, what have you, and I know there's a decent amount of you all that I do get a chance to interact with. You all know that I am one of the most, if you haven't been able to kind of tell, I'm one of the most kind-hearted, uh, well-rounded, just pretty cool person you could get to know. And I, if my multitasking isn't really that hectic on a particular night, I'm more than willing to sit up and hook you guys up and interact with you all. And, you know, one thing that I want in the next co-host is definitely somebody that will definitely interact with you all, uh, somebody that definitely wants to be a team player and isn't treating this as it's some type of a job or can't really have fun with it. Um, you know, I want somebody that can definitely let loose, have fun, and really push that interaction envelope when it comes to you all and isn't distracted by so many other devices. Um, so bear all that in mind. Make sure you leave those comments on YouTube. As, again, it will help us out, especially figuring out who we need to get as a co-host, what is good and what to kind of avoid. And together we all will be on the winning team because, honestly, we can't go through this. I definitely can't go through this. You, the listeners, can't go through this for a third time because it just wouldn't be fair to everybody. So I think together, if we work on this, then we can definitely get it right the third time, right? Right. All right. So on that note, I'm going to go on ahead. I want to just take a brief commercial break, and when we come right back, I want to talk about the fallout from tonight's Impact Wrestling don't worry, folks. I know some of you are probably looking at the time. If you're over here on the East Coast, you're probably saying it's almost 1030. You know, we're not going to go into mad overtime like that. It's been kind of quiet as far as TNA wrestling news. So this will definitely be a short show tonight. We'll talk about the fallout from Impact. We'll also highlight the Slammiversary card as tons of matches was announced on tonight's episode. We'll give you the 411 about all that good stuff. All right, you're checking now Impact Showdown Radio coming at you live right now on May 16th, 2013. We will be coming right back, folks. Everybody, do hang tight. For news you can use, like us on Facebook during this commercial break at Infinity One Productions. Thank you all so much for checking out this episode on May 16th, 2013. All right, so let's have at it. Impact Wrestling, pre-taped tonight, but you know what? It's okay because what we got was a damn good episode as they really started building towards the Slammiversary pay-per-view coming up June 
second. Now, some of the action that we have saw, you know, we got to just kick things off from that big old revelation that we saw last week as we were all kind of kicking back, watching that main event match, wondering who was possibly going to be coming out to team with Kurt Angle, Sting, as they took on Aces and Aids. And lo and behold, it was none other than the Monster Abyss, a man who we have not seen in almost a year, just making his shocking return, just destroying every single member of Aces and Aids. So, of course, the million-dollar question that's on your mind as you're checking out tonight's episode is how is the Aces and Aids going to retaliate? Well, things had kicked off with the immortal Hawk Hogan, who came out to announce one of the matches that was going to be taking place at Slammiversary, as quite honestly, he's getting a little sick and tired of what's going on between Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, and it looks like we're going to have another classic encounter between these two, as Styles will be facing Angle at Slammiversary one on one. Also tonight, we had a contract signing between the icon Sting the TNA champion, Bully Ray, for their main event match. Hogan would then ask the Monster Abyss to come out as he wanted to thank him for making a huge, huge return last week and really coming to the aid of the Hawkster when he needed it most. We didn't get the Monster Abyss. Instead, we got a consolation prize known as Joseph Park, and you could just kind of tell the way that the crowd was acting. Damn good smart crowd, too. That's definitely a wrestling crowd right there. They were just kind of quiet, kind of like, uh-huh, yeah, whatever. We know this already. We know Joseph and Abyss are the same person. Come on, let's move this along. And we see Joseph Park, he comes out, and he's staying in character, talking about how he was chilling on his sofa last week, and he saw his brother, you know, Abyss come back and just destroyed Aces and Aids. He loved it, and Hulk Hogan tells him, look, okay, we got to just cut right to the chase here, Joseph. I need to know, what's going on with your brother, Abyss? Tonight is not a night that he needs to be MIA. Need him here big time. If anybody knows where he is, definitely you. What's going on with him? But before Joseph could give an answer, he gets interrupted by Aces and Nate's Devon and D'Lo Brown. And Devon, he too wants to know where the heck is the monster Abyss. As far as he's concerned, Abyss was not a legal man in that tag match from last week. He basically wants to take out a little frustration on his ass. Well, Joseph Park would jump in and he would tell Devon that he's getting a little sick and tired of him and Aces and Nates, and he wants to fight Devon. Devon tells him straight up, look, I'm the television champion. I don't have to answer to you. You have not earned the right to face me. What have you done? Absolutely nothing. And we see D'Lo, he actually volunteers to take on Joseph. So Hulk Hogan, he makes the match happen with an added stipulation, folks, which is if Joseph Park defeats D'Lo, then he can have a piece of Devon any place, any time that he chooses. Of course, delo has been in a little bit of a funk the past couple of weeks, as right now he has been demoted to that of a little rookie, if that's what you want to go with, a.k.a. a prospect, as his cut was taken away from him. He's been trying to earn it back. Well, we see Mr. Anderson and them, they give him a pep talk, tell him he needs to definitely go out there, pick up the W, because it's not fair that this recent funk that they've been on is, you know, it isn't right because of him. He's the one responsible for it. They also kind of took a little bit of a, what I thought was a cheap attempt to kind of blame D'Lo for the reason why Gary Bischoff and Wes Briscoe haven't been getting the type of push that they deserve is because D'Lo's been kind of burying them. I, I just thought that wasn't even really needed to say. But in either case, we had that match between Joseph, D'Lo, Joseph Park, freak out moment as he gets busted open. He's bloodied. He taps into the powers of Abyss, Black Hole Slam, 
picks up the victory. He's now won the right to take on Devon. No doubt in my mind that the earliest we're probably going to see these two guys get it on is going to be at Slammiversary. Let's talk about that huge contract signing between Bully Ray and Sting. I mean, you just talk about huge, huge stipulations for this contract signing as some stuff was laid out tonight, and it was some heavy stuff. Now, we go to Sting. Sting tells Bully Ray that he needs to do everything humanly possible to defeat him at the pay-per-view. He needs to take his eyeballs out, do whatever he needs to do to beat him because if Bully doesn't beat him, he for sure is going to beat him and he's going to take away that title. What Sting wants is a no-holds-barred match against Bully Ray. Bully Ray, he thinks about it, and in heel-like fashion, he tells me, you know what, you got your match, Sting, but you've got to do something for me in return. You're kind of kicking back, you're kind of marinating on that, and you're saying to yourself, what is it that Bully Ray wants? How can the ante be upped right here? And this is how it was up, folks. Bully Ray tells Sting that if and when he beats the Stinger, that that is it for Sting as far as wrestling goes. Sting cannot compete for the TNA title ever again. Ever again. Let me stress that. Again. Ever again. So you're hearing that, and I know there's probably some of you out there that is probably in euphoria right now that Sting is being put in this position, as some of you are probably already given that early forecast, well, then Sting's going to definitely lose. As one of our longtime listeners, Robert, had pointed out, in case you guys might not know, Sting has made an appearance in the main event match at Slammiversary like the past four years now, including this one, this will be his fifth. So you hear that, you know, I don't know about you all, but I'm kind of looking at that, and I can't help but say there's definitely going to be some uh, shenanigans that's going to be going down in that main event match. But in either case, I do see Bully Ray coming out on top, still your TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Some of you may not like that. But I think the majority of fans will definitely be in agreement that Sting has tasted that championship one too many times. He's been in the main event scene one too many times. It's really time to see some new blood get injected. It's time to see some new blood finally step up. And speaking of new blood stepping up, we had saw two, count them two, TNA gut check contestants make their return for qualifying matches to go into the Bound for Glory series to possibly go on to become the TNA champion at the Bound for Glory pay-per-view. It was the one and only Jay Bradley taking on Virginia's favorite son, Christian York. Jay Bradley picking up the victory. Great matchup right there, but, you know, I had... A little bit of a slight problem with this match. And I don't know if some of you all are feeling me what I'm about to say. But was I the only one that was kind of kicking back and looking at that particular match and going, why does it have to be the young blood taking on the young blood? In other words, why does it have to be the new talent taking on the new talent? Why can't they take on somebody else that's on the roster already, and just be elevated. Now, don't get me wrong. I still believe that we're going to see these TNA gut check contestants continue to get pushed in the Bound for Glory series. I'm not balling two in particular. I think Jay Bradley is going to go just a little bit further. Um, I also think that uh, maybe Sam Shaw could go a little bit further. But I just thought it was a little weird to kind of kick back and see just 
TNA gut check contestant taking on another TNA gut check contestant, it, it just kind of rattles my mind to no end because the last time that we saw these TNA gut check contestants, I believe it was like around Thanksgiving or something like that. Yeah, it's coming back to me now. There was like a Thanksgiving episode where it was pretty much just dominated by former TNA gut check winners, and they were pretty much fighting each other with the exception of Taylor Hendricks. I'm kind of looking at that and I'm saying, okay, TNA booking, no disrespect, but is this the best idea that you have for the male TNA gut check winners? Every time we get ready to see them, they're pretty much going to be facing one another. That isn't right. Let's see them do some other stuff with some other wrestlers. Now, some of you might be kind of kicking back. You might be saying, well, Lee, who could possibly these guys uh, have taken on. Well, it kind of would have been nice to maybe see Magnus take on Jay Bradley, but he did get that severe beat down by Aces and Nate, so you unfortunately kind of have to scratch him off. I don't think Magnus is quite ready yet, but they're probably trying to save him later on during the Bound for Glory series, so that's another one that's kind of out of the picture. You know, we could probably kick back and just marinate on this for about 10 minutes, but in either case, I think you guys would definitely be in agreement that when it's all said and done, hey, you got these talents that got signed on to the roster. Let's start really seeing them earn their keep already. But I will say this. I will say this. I like the progression of Jay Bradley. Christian York is still spot on good just like the last few times I've seen him on the roster because I know out of all the TNA gut check winners, he's been the one that's made more appearances than all of them, and probably all of them combined, really. But Jay Bradley, he definitely seems to be more polished off than the last time he was in that ring. I will give him that. seems like the training he's been getting down at OVW has been paying big dividends. But I'm glad to finally see the Bound for Glory series go down. All right, other action that uh, we had saw on Impact tonight, we saw Bobby Roode defeat Chavo Guerrero via DQ. This was pretty much courtesy of James Storm, as Storm had came into the ring, and he had a beer bottle in hand. You're kind of thinking back, oh, man, is James Storm trying to come out, maybe get a little bit of payback here? What the hell is about to go down here? Well, James Storm, he does the next best thing, and he spits beer in the face of um, of um, Bobby Roode, and as Bobby Roode just lays rolling on the ground trying to roll out the referee, he has no choice but to call for the bell, so you're kind of thinking, who just won? It was Chavo that won uh, via DQ. Uh, correction, correction, it was Bobby Roode that won via DQ, since we had James Storm technically attack. Bobby Roode. I think the match just should have freaking continued. I don't know about you guys. I mean, a spit, really? We're going to look at a spit as an assault? I would hate to see what happens if one were to break wind to somebody in the middle of the ring. Would that be a form of an assault, too? I mean, I'm just saying. Or if you get in the ring, you have no business being in there, and you cough on the person's face, is that a freaking DQ? I'm just curious what makes a freaking DQ nowadays, but... In either case, James Storm, he's trying to get a little bit of retribution for the beatdown that he received from the team of Bad Influence and Austin Aries, Bobby Roode, last week. Got a little bit of payback tonight. He was one for one right here. We would see him again later in the night uh, as he ended up uh, interfering in a match that was between Hernandez and Christopher Daniels, kind of somewhat almost doing the same thing. However, Hernandez was able to pick up the victory with a shoulder block. But James Storm, at this point, he had already spoken with TNA General Manager Hawk Hogan as he dropped a bombshell on them. Turns out that Slammiversary is going to be bad influence. Daniels and Kazarian teaming up to take on the team of Austin Aries, Bobby Roode, and, get ready for it, James Storm and a partner of his choosing for the TNA Tag 
titles. Now, some of you are probably kicking back and you're saying, man, who could James Storm possibly team up with? I have a suggestion. I'd like to see what he can do uh, with the Cowboy, too. I wouldn't mind seeing Magnus team up with James Storm. Will he go down that route? Probably not, but I think it would be kind of cool if that were to go down. I know some people are kind of looking at maybe Rob Van Dam possibly teaming up with James Storm. I doubt that's going to happen. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of getting this vibe that there just continues to be some type of ongoing negotiations with TNA, Rob Van Dam. I know some people are giddy over the fact that Rob Van Dam made an appearance at the WWE Hall of Fame ceremony, and they think that he's going to be coming back. Rob Van Dam has said numerous times, as early as this year, that there's just no way he's going to be going back to the WWE because of their strict wellness policy. If I need to remind you guys, remember when he was ECW, WWE champion, and how fast he lost both belts in the span of one freaking week because of his drug weed, you know, weed violation? He wouldn't last. I wouldn't even give Rob Van Dam 90 days in the in the new WWE, especially the PG-friendly WWE. I, I just don't see him in there. I think he's ironing out some stuff with TNA. Quite honestly, it wouldn't even surprise me if he was already signed with TNA, you know, if a new deal was worked out and they're just trying to figure out exactly when they want to bring him back. Remember, they kind of did the same thing there with Devon as they were trying to set up the whole Aces and Eights, kind of led us believing that Devon was done with the company, which was really a, a, a great juke on TNA Wrestling's part. But this is to be continued. It should be very interesting to see what goes down next week, as I'm quite sure James Storm will probably uh, make an announcement or tease his selection of who he wants to partner with him. He's probably going to say something to the effect of he's got it down to about two, three people, and his decision is going to be made next week. Here's another name that you all should be thinking about, too, and I know some of you all may not agree with this, uh, but James Storm could also get as his mysterious partner uh, the one and only Mojo Jojo. I haven't said that name in a good minute, King Mo. Wow, wow. Um, that that could be another one that uh, could team up with him. Remember, he was long, long overdue for a TNA wrestling debut. But remember, because of that uh, loss that he had suffered on Bellator a couple of months back, it kind of hurt his momentum, and they kind of didn't want to bring him into TNA wrestling fresh off of a defeat. So don't be too surprised if it might be. King Mo Lao, and I'm kind of leaning more towards that right now. That kind of makes just a little bit more sense for me, especially since they said they, he is supposed to be debuting for the company this summer. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards that. I know some of you are signed right now. I can just feel it. Y'all are going to be disappointed when you see that it's him. But, hey, I'm, I, don't say I didn't try to warn you. Uh, we had a really cool triple threat match for the X Division title as Kenny King successfully defeated Chris Sabin and Petey Williams was so relieved that they did not put the title on Chris Sabin. I just couldn't help but look at that and go, Whew, because you know how usually TNA, they like to be kind of spontaneous at times and you think that maybe something's going to go down with a title changing hands at a pay-per-view, and they'll just, out of nowhere, they'll just do a 180, and you're kind of like, where the hell did that come from? So I was definitely glad to see that they didn't put the strap on Chris Sabin, and I love the fact that they are just continuing to go with Kenny King. Kenny King needs to continue to get as much TV time as possible. I've just been loving the hell out of his work. I mean, he just seems like every week he just really kind of comes off as if he's pushing himself as that character, as, as that guy you just want to freaking just hate to death. He's just 
been really doing a good job pushing all those buttons, and I think that the big payoff for this needs to be Chris Sabin, Kenny King for that X Division title. I don't even think it needs to go down that Slammiversary, but if they're even going to try to... Uh, and as a matter of fact, there was a match uh, that was announced, and I believe it's going to be going down at Slammiversary. Yes, folks, it is, now that, that I'm recalling it. At Slammiversary, it's going to be Kenny King defending his uh, X Division title in a triple threat match. He's going to be defending it against Suicide, uh, and the other participant that uh, is going to be in that match, ah, I can't think of the, it's on the tip of my tongue right now, and I can't think of the third person. I know somebody's probably going to hit me up on Facebook and, and send me the name. Anybody that's on Twitter, before we go off the air, you're more than welcome to uh, send me a tweet and let me know who the third person is. Uh, but um, in the meantime, Special shout out to one of our uh, followers on Twitter by the name of Frock Ross, who's uh, been creating a little bit of uh, controversy with her recent tweets as uh, she's been uh, trying to challenge a certain female wrestler. I highly recommend you go check out her timeline to uh, find out who it is that she's talking about facing. All I got to say is meow, meow, meow. That'd be one hell of a cat fight if that were to go down. Other action we saw on Impact Wrestling tonight. You know, we were just talking about the meow meows there. We did see some cool knockout divas action, or knockouts as I like to call them, as uh, we had saw Velvet Sky pick up a victory over Gail Kim. This was surprisingly a better match I've seen Velvet Sky in really since she's been back with the company. I actually enjoyed this match quite a lot for a singles match as she was kind of taking most of the beating, but I don't know what a little bit that I saw her do as far as the offense goes. She she did pretty pretty damn well. Post matches where it got uh, kind of interesting as Kim once again had bust out the figure four leg lock during the ring post. ODB though she luckily was able to make the save. And we also have found out a new development that's been brewing in the Knockouts division. As Brooke Hogan was seen in the backstage segment talking with Mickey James, congratulating her on the success of her new country album, and also telling her that at Slammiversary it's going to be Tara taking on Gail Kim. Mickey James, though, she still wants to get in on that pay per view match. Brooke tried to make it up to her in another way, as next week on Impact, it's going to be Mickey James taking on Velvet Sky for the Knockouts title. So, oh, you follow up. I mean, just think about that. You go from Gail Kim this week, and then you go to Mickey James the next week. That's that Talk about getting her ready for Slammiversary. I, I love that. Other action that we had saw on Impact tonight, I, I believe that's uh, that's pretty much it, boys and uh, boys and girls. I believe we ran down the entire card. I mean, we had got a grand total of let's see four matches of the night, and we had the uh, contract signing between Sting, Bully Ray. Yeah, I'm and I'm thinking off the top of my head here, not scripted. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much the whole episode tonight. Like I said, they did a phenomenal job in setting up the Slammiversary pay-per-view as they announced more matches, and then on top of that, you uh, got the riveting storyline there that's going on with Sting and Bully Ray as you got that stipulation in there that if Sting were to lose to Bully Ray, that's it. He's never going to be able to compete for that TNA title again. I think this is just really smart on TNA's part. I think this really, when you look at it, is really a good step going forward. We know that there's those passionate TNA wrestling fans that have been with the product since day one, and they've just grown tired within recent years of always seeing Sting in the main event and, Somehow, Lady Luck is on his side when it comes to Slammiversary. He keeps getting the title, and or he always comes out 
on top, and I'm sure that you guys are probably looking at this and saying, all right, we're finally going to see Sting be taken out of the picture. And for me, it's definitely a sign that things are finally starting to wind down for the icon. You know how it is every year. Sting signs a one-year deal, and he keeps negotiating with Dixie as he's finding it hard to leave, and we can only speculate how much millions of dollars that he's getting to stick around for one year. But it's got to be a pretty freaking sweet deal. But I think we're finally starting to see the seeds being planted of an eventual exit for the Stinger. But mark my words, it's not going to necessarily mean that he's going to be done with wrestling altogether. Remember, there's a certain company up in Stamford, Connecticut, that wants to do some work with Sting, let alone as far as the DVDs go and the great documentaries they can get with him. Let's think about all that good stuff, especially since they got the whole entire uh, WCW uh, library and all the other libraries of promotions, territories that he's worked for. Trust me, once Sting does leave TNA, he's not going to just be done with wrestling altogether. Mark my words on that. As far as TNA wrestling news go, pretty much the one headline that's jumping out at me right now, as it's been a really, really quiet week, was the teabagging incident that we had saw go down last week as the beautiful and the lovely Christy Hemme She had announced the uh, team of Austin Aries, Bobby Roode, as bad influence, Daniels and Kazarian. Austin Aries was pretty ticked off about that, it looked like, a little irritated. Got all up in Christy Hemme's face, getting her in the corner. And Christy, she said the name correctly. But to kind of add a little bit of insult to injury, Austin Aries, he gets on top of the turnbuckle while she is in the corner, trapped, and kind of pretty much, is it 11 o'clock now? Yes, it is. It's 11 o'clock. We can kind of go a little dirty now with the talking. He pretty much put his balls in her face. And one fan had asked Christy if she had got teabagged by Austin, and she replied back, yes, I did, and I absolutely did not like that. And, you know, it's funny because if you go to our Facebook page over at Infinity One Productions, we got the video up, and you can just hear and just see Christy Hemme. She goes, okay, okay, when he does that. And even afterwards, you can just hear the tone in her voice. Definitely she was greatly offended by that. And it was so severe that TMZ actually had broke out the story. As you know, nowadays they like to kind of stay on top of uh, wrestling news. It turns out TNA President Dixie Carter, she took offense to that as Austin Aries was fined for that. Uh, I know that there's probably some people that may feel a little mixed about this. Some people may feel that this really isn't a big deal, that Dixie just... That Dixie and crew, they just caved in favor of Christy Hemme. And understand this, understand this. At the end of the day, it's all about making a business decision. It's all about making a smart move. I know there's many of you that probably played the footage back and you're saying his balls was nowhere near her face. Okay? There's some of you that's probably saying... This is stupid. Why was he fine? See, here's the deal. Christy Hemme, we can only speculate on how much money she's getting for doing the whole ring announcing work. I hear she's getting like about maybe $125,000. I mean, she's she's getting a pretty decent pay. Put it to you this way. Her pay is a little bit better than some of the knockouts, unfortunately. And that's the damn truth. All right? I'm not bullshitting you guys. That's the truth. But here's the thing. When you have a woman like Christy Hemme in that type of a position and she's crying foul, fortunately 
you kind of have to get on top of that as soon as possible because if you don't, and unfortunately you put yourself and your company in a position where one could file a lawsuit and claim that there was some type of sexual harassment in the work environment and that the employer did not do anything to discipline that employee. You feel me? That's the position that TNA, Dixie Carter, and crew were in. So unfortunately, they had to discipline Austin Aries. I know some of you may not like that, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think you would all be in agreement. You know, just think about your own respected work environment. You know, no means no, and, you know, if somebody's messing with you or, heaven forbid, as I know it's mostly guys that listen to our shows, you know, not not – not, you know, we know we got women that listen, but we know it's mostly guys that listen to the show. You know, just picture your girlfriend coming home, and she tells you that some punk dude was just kind of rubbing up on her or kind of had her in a weird position that, you know, she couldn't really get out of as he was kind of trying to force, herself, uh, force himself on her you guys would be ready to go to that workplace and y'all would be ready to beat the crap out of that guy. And don't tell me, nah, nah, nah. I know damn well you would. Yeah, I know damn sure if it was your mama, you'd be up there at that workplace, okay? So understand it from that standpoint. But it does kind of bring us a very valid question. What's going on with some of these bad boys in pro wrestling? And that's definitely going to be one of the topics that we're going to bring up on the weekend edition of the RCWR show. I mean, you take a look at CM Punk punching a fan. You take a look at what went down in Ring of Honor wrestling with Jay Briscoe as he said deflammatory things about the gay community over same-sex marriage. Got him in the doghouse big time. You look at the comments that Mason Andrews had said. As a result, WWE, they no longer want to have anything to do with him. You want to stay with TNA? Look at the comments that came from Bully Ray as he had called somebody a fan at that, a faggot, after Impact Wrestling went off the air. Just what exactly is going on with all these bad boys in wrestling? Are they really that in tune to the characters? Or are they really kind of displaying a true part of their personality. We're going to go in-depth about that this Saturday, so make sure that you join us for that. We'll also cover highlights from what you might have missed on main event, SmackDown, also the latest in wrestling-related news, entertainment news. You know how we do it on the weekend edition, so make sure that you check that out. A few folks were wondering what was going on with the live YouTube version of Impact Showdown tonight. Well, it was mainly because of our special guest. I thought we were going to have Justin Reno, but we ended up having Judas Yorick on the show. That was really awkward, too. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're going to go back to live stream next week. We're actually going to simulcast next week. So what that means, you'll be able to watch us live on YouTube, and you'll be able to listen to us on Blog Talk. So Blog Talk Radio listeners, y'all will not be left out in the cold. We know there's many of you that probably be kicking back. You're at work. You may not have access to a computer. By the time we're on the air, you may be trying to use your smartphone to listen to our shows or what have you, or iPad, what have you. We're going to have you covered next week as we'll be simulcasting from here on out. So rest assured, we got your hook up beginning next week and don't forget boys and girls may 30th impact wrestling it moves back to its old 9 p.m time slot but we will still continue to come on immediately after impact wrestling goes off the air i want to just send a special shout out to judas yorick for dropping by wonder what the hell happened to justin reno but hey it happens and uh, definitely uh, want to encourage you guys to rewind, check out any episodes that you might have missed. We've been putting out some damn good shows all month long. 
If you haven't checked out our special interviews yet, I highly encourage you to do so. So far, all this month, mind you, we've had the beautiful and the lovely former TNA Knockouts champion, the beautiful and lovely Miss Katarina Waters, a.k.a. Winner. She's come by the show. We've had Shine Wrestling's beautiful, luscious Latasha drop by the show. Uh, we had TNA Gut Check contestant Steve Off, the Silver Screen superstar. A lot of cool guests that uh, has all come by. And we're even going to have some more guests that's going to be showing up uh, next week. Stay to our website. Stay tuned to our website over at InfinityOneProductions.com for all the info on more guests that's going to be coming by the show to help us close out the month. And be sure to subscribe to us in the iTunes, Stitcher Marketplaces. Use the keywords, the RCWR show. I hope you all had a good time with the show tonight. Let's do this again this Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern. That's going to do it. Everybody be safe. Be kind to one another. Take care, folks.